Cool. All right, so um, I'm going to do, I, I, I work at a Japanese bank in London and um, I work in production services running their finance systems. And um, I did a, I had quite a lot of questions coming my way from various people in our division about what I was busy with in this uh, ros Rosbury Pies. So I put together a little pack for them and uh, it was about 20 minutes. So I just thought I'd go through it um, here. If you've got any more technical questions, um, some of the basics, obviously I'll skim over here because it's um, many of those aspects you want to know, but just, just an idea of um, some of the projects that I've done over the last four years. So first one I'll cover is the, my personal web page. Next one is a digital dashboard. Many of you will know it is the Magic Mirror. Um, then what I've done with my backups for my NAS drive, and then a um, VPN, NFS, FTP, Sambo, and QTT um, server that I've got up in the roof, and some home automation and some Python work that I'm doing around that. Uh, I hope everybody can see my screen. Right, so just uh, quickly, the um, my uh, uh, web page was created way back in 1993. Had about 100 photos on it. I used Notepad. Um, to handcraft the HTML, there's only one or two pages. Uh, front page was released in '96. I then moved it um, to um, put the old Captain Kirky, and it um, sat in front page until about 1997. Uh, um, from 1997, um, and then I then used uh, front page to maintain it for about the next 18 years. So the problem I was going to have was uh, the last version was released in 2003. No plans to upgrade. Um, end of last soon after, and I was getting um, problem, problems thumbnailing large photographs, especially when, when I went on holiday with my photographer brother. I took photos at huge resolution, and the web company Arcs Web Posting was um, complaining about the size of the site. So it was about 160,000 files um, and about 130 gigs. So just on the left there, you can see the interface front page users that have used it, um, and then on the right was just a um, of course, when it's rendered in a um, in a browser. So the decision was made mid 2015 to move to WordPress. When she uh, initially was Arx web hosting, um, they're based in well, they help us anyways in Ukraine. Fantastic people, but they they had they started hiking the price and restrictions. They claim it's unlimited space, but it actually isn't. So um, first thing I did was move some of my media. Um, photographs into Flickr and videos to YouTube. So Flickr, there's a um, there's an add-in for uh, WordPress where you can basically it's an API into Flickr, so you could can upload all your photos onto Flickr, um, and then it's basically just um, a link to um, to the Flickr albums. So Raspberry Pi came out in 2016, and I did a few searches. I came across it on a bit of a web search. And I saw that somebody had actually web hosted it from home and I bought my first Raspberry Pi, first of about 15 I've got in the house now. Installed Apache, PHP, WordPress, etc. Migrated um, site from IoT web hosting. So it's been running for the last three, four years now, the Raspberry Pi 3. Um, and I'll say 98%, I'd say it's at least 98 at the moment. But um, yeah, it's been pretty good. So of course I'm saving saving by not having it hosted externally. Um, and I've learned, learned a fair amount. I'll get onto the whole um, network setup on a future slide. Um, the next one, many of you know it is the um, Magic Mirror. Um, so this is, I wanted something that turned on when there was motion. So you the bottom right, there's a um, motion sensor. I'm actually moving it over to a motion sensor that attached to the Raspberry Pi, but at the moment it's on a it's nine volt connected to the main supply on the, uh, on the TV in the kitchen. And um, it's fed from the NAS. Um, so I do, um, I'm changing that at the moment actually. To do, so I do an R sync to a um, hard drive that's linked to this Raspberry Pi. This one's just been upgraded to Raspberry Pi 4. Um, and then I compress it and rotate the photo so they come out the right way around. But also on the dashboard is the current time, date, upcoming holidays, uh, my girlfriend's and mine, Google calendars. So you walk into the kitchen, you walk past the TV, it turns on, you can see what each other's doing that day. Um, I'm from South Africa, my girlfriend's from Australia, so it comes up the time in each, uh, each of our home countries, so we don't call it an unsociable time. Um, there's an API on Spotify, so I have um, my Alexa um, connected to a Sonos speaker, and Alexa streams off Spotify, and there's an API into Spotify, so you can you ask Alexa to play a song, um, it then comes out on the dashboard as well. Upload, download speed, current weather, forecasts, temperature from sensors spread over the house, so I have 
um, four or five Raspberry Pis spit around with sensors attached to them, um, or with Python programs running that um, publish onto MQTT, and then that um, that is then consumed onto this digital dashboard as well as um, the home uh, home automation um, application, which is Python based, which I'll get onto uh, shortly. Other thing um, that was always good to know when you walked past the TV in the morning was if the times are running on time. So there's an add-in for the train times. And public holidays coming up in South Africa and Australia, um, and a CCTV um, stream as well. And one stage I had a to-do list with my girlfriend decided she started putting far too much on that so I took that off the dashboard again starting to get way on hand. So here's um, a um, picture of it so you can see top left there's the time there's oh, Rosbury Pi so I took the screen image um, two days ago so it just reminds me each time I walk past that um, that's on. Um, this is the um, album that's playing at the point in time it's playing on my says the echo it's playing on my echo dot in the song etc etc. Time in Cape Town, time in Melbourne, that's the stream up my uh, video stream up my driveway of a, another Raspberry Pi. Top right, uh, weather, wind, everything there, so it can be self explanatory. And um, then the temperature from uh, different sensors. Um, and then this used to be train times, but now we're all working from home and not using the trains at all. I changed that over to the um, uh, COVID 19 stats, so that's just interesting to see what's going on with those. And then upcoming South African holidays, Australian holidays, I've uh, added this year as well, system temperature 45. So it's quite interesting to see there um, how the temperature varies. So on the Raspberry Pi forward, um, I've got a tiny little fan on the above the processor. So it runs at about 77 when I disconnect that. When I have it connected, it sits between 45 and 49. So that's just been quite interesting. And download speed and upload speed, of course, of my fiber connection. Right, so moving on. Um, the one thing that I, um, quite a long time ago, I kept all my um, photos, especially just on my laptop. And anyway, unbeknown to me, there was a bit of an issue on the hard drive. And um, the um, about five, six directories got corrupted. And of course, I didn't know they'd been corrupted and I backed it up for years and years and years. And then eventually I went back to look at the photos and they'd been corrupted. And of course, I've been happily backing up corrupted photos. So. Um, going back to a backup from 10 years before was um, not an option. So um, the one thing I looked at my uh, looked at doing, I've got a Zyxel um, NAS drive. So I routed that so that I could SSH into it, um, and then it meant, it meant I could rsync off the NAS drive. So there's something on GitHub that I found, which uh, does a rsync TM, which the guy calls. So it does a um, sort of an Apple time machine type backup. So it creates hard links um, and it creates multiple directories. So if the file hasn't changed, it's just a hard link to the original. So um, it, and then it creates a new directory. So if I run that once a month, I get a new uh, link and only the files that have changed or been added, get added to the new image. Um, so of course this gives me two two advantages. The one thing is, as I said, this, you know, those files that I had corrupted, I can then roll back to the version before it got corrupted, and I have needed to do that before with um, my girlfriend's tax return database. And um, the other thing is, if I do get ransomware for whatever reason, the theory is that I can go back to the version. I should see um, the uh, immediately after I've been ransomware, I should see huge deltas in the files, which will mean this will make. Um, a very long running and large delta, and um, that would trigger me to go and see what's going on, and I could then go back to an earlier version. Um, fortunately, I haven't needed to do that, but hopefully that um, uh, that option is there. And then the digital digital dashboard feeder, so I copy, uh, make another copy of the files, and I feed that into the dashboard. Although I'm actually attaching that um, hard drive to the dashboard now, now that I've upgraded to a Raspberry Pi four. Um, the next. Project um, VPN, you guys all know know this pretty well, but it's uh, be able to connect to to home. Um, it gives me um, my my girlfriend and I we travel quite a lot. First been to about 160 countries, go to about 20, 25 a year, except for this year probably. Um, so the one thing she you know she it's quite good to be able to access things like Gmail in China, Skype in UAE is blocked. So um, she was able to look at strictly come dancing in Beirut on BBC iPlayer, so all that kind of thing becomes possible, but that's all, of course, everybody on this call will be familiar with that. Um, NFS, um, so the, uh, it runs, this one runs an NFS server as well, which means 
course, I have my scripts or my half Python scripts, etc., sitting on NFS, and I don't have separate copies spread around. And also, for instance, on the motion cameras, um, they um, I basically mount a drive onto the NFS server, which means all my um, CCTV um, footage ends up on this. Um, and I've got a on an FS tab entry for a um, can't quite see it there. Um, a thumb you can see just at the top top left over there. You can see the thumb drive just sticking out. So I've got a sixty four gig thumb drive with a cron tab that tears it down after three months. So all the media sits on there of, from the um, cameras. Uh, FTP. So two of the cameras are RSTP RSTP um, cameras from China. So those are saved down to this um, Raspberry Pi as well, Samba. So of course, just to make it so that I can use um, Windows editors if I want to edit the Python scripts, etc. And the MQTT broker for those, um, um, most of you are probably familiar with that, but it's a pub sub self so published from all the um, Python uh, modules spread around the house, and then I subscribe from whatever's interested in that. So it's, at the moment, it's the, the dashboard I showed, but also the other Python. Um, home IO application, but also it's going to be, I'm going to start putting um, you know, uh, plugs that go on and off, et cetera, et cetera. Moving on. Um, some of you will be familiar with this as the home IO, home assistant IO. Um, so there you can see the screen over there. Um, so it's, um, some of them are those two top ones, they are RTSP feeds, um, and then the rest are Raspberry Pis. So this one over there, top right, is this camera over here, which is at my front door. And that one over there is the camera below it. So, um, and then I've got um, one of those sense hats on top of it, so Raspberry Pi Zero. So it shows the uh, house number. And, um, and then of course, this is that um, one way mirror glass that you can make. And then another Ros the, the Raspberry Pi, of course, has another camera with uh, infrared um, on each side. Um, this is one of the Raspberry Pis. It's a sensor in upstairs. So it's just got a motion sensor. And this I bought um, from AliExpress. I think it's just a wooden box um, that they sell watches in, I think. So I could just put a Raspberry Pi and it doesn't, um, you know, fits in okay. It doesn't look too bad. Um, this is one of the, um, uh, setups that I've got in the front of the garage. So um, the one thing I had on the front of the garage was a 300 watt um, motion sensor light. So that's um, changing over now. I've got my house number now on the front with all of the LEDs and they're pretty bright. I mean, they're not as bright as a 300 watt bulb, but it gives a lot of heat, a lot of um, light, so that's fine. Um, I've got a camera at the top, motion sensor at the bottom, and just some lights that goes red flashes if there's movement. Um, uh, blue if it's um if a temperature sensor is uh, um, sending an MQTT message, and then it's I've got a, a one meter cables into the garage, which you can see the um, camera ribbon there, and then there's a temperature and various other bits and bobs, and there's one on the other side of the garage as well. Um, and this, um, uh, as many of you know, with the Raspberry Pi, if you've got it um, connected to Ethernet, you can create a virtual bridge. So this is actually a um, a hotspot for the Raspberry Pi zeros in the garage as well. So um, that works really, really well. Other than the connection back with three video streams, of course, runs pretty hot, but that seems to be fine. Um, but there's just some other images, perhaps. Um, just see. Over here. Yeah, that's my the magic mirror that I showed you earlier. But of course, we, uh, we've got dark now, so it's only those, the, the ones with the infrared, um, infrared light that, uh, that are showing at the moment. So let's go back here. Um, yeah, and the temperature sensors are quite interesting. Um, you know, if I, if I look at the um, humidity, for instance, in the kitchen at about lunchtime, I can see um, the sensors um, above the unit in the kitchen, so I can see exactly how many coffees I've had, because of course, every time I pull the kettle, it does a, it does a blip. So there's some interesting, interesting kind of, um, you can see exactly kind of what's been going on in the house, which is sometimes quite interesting. Um, just current home network. Um, so this is my Virgin router that comes in from the street, of course. Um, so this is the DNZ and my non-DNZ, my private side. So 
everything that I'm not too fussed about getting hacked sits on this side because um, I've got port forwarding. So I'm always very nervous about port forwarding on the private side. So um, port forwards, of course, 1194 goes to uh, my VPN, 80 goes to my WordPress site, and then I have various other bits and bobs spread around, sensors, etc. And then on the private side, I then have um, no port forwarding on here. It goes in the WAN port, and then um, it then goes out across my um, network uh, for my all, all my kind of private stuff. And these everything on this on the non DMZ side effectively done here. I really do not want to get hacked on that side, which is um, why I'm very strict about not having any port forwarding over there. Uh, anything else I wanted to cover there? Um, so next steps, um, so Ansible, actually this, um, my project moved on slightly with Ansible. I'm using Ansible quite a lot now. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention it on the score, but I even bought two orange pies just to see what they're about. But I've um, got Ansible running on an orange pie, pushing out um, builds um, across the network now. So things like um, Monitrix, for instance, this down here. So you can see how hot your, um, I think I put it on one of mine. So you can see how hot um, a machine's running. So on my web server, for instance, I do a reboot twice a day. Um, I'm just quite keen. Sometimes it's run pretty hot and I'm not quite sure why, but if I do this reboot twice a day, it seems to be absolutely fine. I'm not sure if somebody's trying to do something on it or hitting it or something. Um, I do have basic authentication, so you do need an ID password, but I'm still, it's, you know, it's obviously a level of nervousness around having it open. But for those that um, have not used Monotrix, it's quite good just to be able to see how, how hot it's running. Um, Kind of IO, for instance, um, my daughter back in South Africa can um, uh, VPN onto my network and download photos, for instance. So I can see very quickly whether she's been downloading photos and videos of her childhood, which is quite interesting. Um, so enhancing the Python modules. So again, I've got um, a pro, a Python scripts that run for um, a temperature, humidity, motion. I've got um, the in the garage. Um, uh, let me just quickly go there. Yeah, on the garage here, you can see I've got these LED strips running down. So the view is, for instance, the Python apps, and that, that it is working now, but based off just um, night and day, but that it will also be um, motion triggered. And the view is eventually I'll also have it um, some sort of geofencing. So when you're approaching the house, they start getting lighter. Um, yeah, so the next one, geofencing. Uh, continue setting up. So I've got. Um, for monitoring, so um, Sentinel, some of you will be aware of, but um, Nagios and Zabbix, Zabbix is a fork of Nagios. So um, at the moment I'm using uh, um, Monitrix, but that's of course just local to the machine, but in terms of being able to recover services which go down, um, alerting when something goes down, etc. cetera, um, you, know, you need to move to something more, uh, more robust, such as um, Zabbix is the one that I'm looking to at the moment. I was looking at something um, in AWS where you could set up sort of a hybrid between AWS and your Raspberry Pis and somebody had done it. But I think the, the one concern I did have it is was potentially going to start getting quite um, expensive once I'd get off, got off their free one year trial. Um, everything at the moment for me is sort of Contab, unfortunately. So I moved to an open source scheduler, um, one of the other things that you want to do at some stage. And then schedule, schedule reboot. So you can see the web server reboots twice a day. Um, but some of the other, um, some of the others do not, um, partly because the Python apps are start manually. So I want to get those all set up as proper services to start when a uh, start on reboot without using the contab um, kind of hack. Um, and then of course have Zebex monitor that they that they stay up when they do come up. And yeah, that's it. We'll stop. Just a quick. Quick overview. Um, so yeah, so at work I had about, um, I think 30, 40 people at the, when I did this presentation to them and I'd say about a quarter of them bought Raspberry Pis and half of those that bought them have actually done something with them. So I still see it as a reasonable success. But um, it, yeah, it's been interesting. And I've got um, a few other sort of more minor projects sort of bumbling along on the side, but of course having a, a full-time job and everything, it's like all of us, it's figuring out what you can fit in. Uh, I think that's about it. Any questions? Uh, yeah, Brian, you mentioned the orange pies. What yes. are your sort of first feelings about them? Because well, I'll let you go first and I'll tell you what I think. But 
Yeah, I, I must say that eco, I really miss having the ecosystem and, and the support, etc. Because I'm trying to do something as similar as linking, as setting up the DHC22 and the um, uh, and the infrared sensors. And there's so little documentation out there, and it's like it's. I find it's um, the only thing that I think I'm going to find them useful for is they've got a like a separate little aerial, and I'm thinking of putting one out in the kind of soffit outside with the aerial sticking through the soffit, and that'll be a a Wi-Fi hotspot in my Ansible server. But in terms of, um, I don't know, I was, it, I've been a bit disillusioned with them, to be quite frank. You know, I got it just out of interest. Um, yeah. But no, I've, no. I mean, I, I have a Orange Pi Zero. I bought one. I forget where I bought it from. It was AliExpress or something. And yeah. yeah, the documentation is sort of non-existent and the thing runs very hot. And so you, you switch over to um, Armbrian probably aware of Armbry and the Linux build for sort of all the other clone uh, Pi clones. I'm just using standard Debian on mine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But it, and it just, it would lock up on the boot and I just, I got nowhere and it's like right going in bin sort of thing. So when you said Orange Pi, I was just very interested to sort of hear what you thought. But yeah, it sounds very I've similar. The... <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too, um, uh, yeah, so I've got these, uh, can you see it? Yeah, so it's also the zero. The zero, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they and they are nice and small. They got Ethernet, which I kind of I quite like having, um, instead of doing the you know. And I've bought a few of those um, micro US, USB to Ethernet adapters of AliExpress, but they crash my network and they're an absolute disaster. So it's yeah, you know, when you buy once you've bought the adapter, and I do I do like the fact, for instance, what I'm doing is um, all my Raspberry Pi um, three and fours that are in my DMZ. I'm making them as um, virtual bridges. And it means, because um, I've had one or two very clever IT friends come in and hack my network just for fun. I'm, I'm quite liking the fact of putting them on the, in the DMZ and if they, if they connect, they will actually be in a completely separate Wi-Fi network. Um, yeah. And it's also, um, you know, if your network is running at, let's, let's say running at 50 megs down, um, these, it'll only have to deliver about 15 megs down so it kind of automatically throttles people uh you know people that, and my neighbor can then hook onto it as a reserve as, if they like as well but it's it's not going to be fast but it's good enough but yeah as i say my orange orange pie experience has been been a bit variable you know it was more just for interest in anything else but yeah, yeah so I know you mean it looks the zero particularly it looks a great package on paper when you actually start yeah. trying to do anything with it it's just yeah yeah. I wish you the best and it's of luck things, with that. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's something as simple as reading a sensor and you look at all over the web and like people have been struggling all over the place and you go yeah. like, but I, I, I did this in 10 minutes in a Raspberry Pi. Why I know, it, why is... I know, yeah. It's, yeah, you always end up going, or well, I always end up going back to Pi Zero. You just, you get yeah, to the point, exactly. like, sod this and you're back to the Raspberry Pi and it's like, oh, it works. Yeah, yeah. well, I've done yeah. that for my sensors now. I've just given up because it's just... It's, yeah. it's, I'd rather have a more standard approach and stick to one. But but as if you're looking just for compute, so I'm not using not using the GPIO, etc. Um, it's okay. Uh, it's it's cheap, mm. cheap and cheerful. Of course, the the, the um, Orange Pi Zero is only half half a gig, so you're a little bit low on memory. So I had um, WordPress running on it for a while, but it, you end up with, with probably more swap swap than usage than you'd want, and you know as you know that burns cards out long term. Yeah. Or Brian, I had a question. So um, I, I see you doing a lot of like reboots on cron and stuff like that. So what reliability problems are you finding? Are you actually finding problems or are you just sort of prophylactic reboots? No, actually interesting. I mean, the one thing is um, that one I've been rebooting probably only for two months um, and that's absolutely fine. But, but um, I'm finding with thumb drives, they don't, um, for some reason, I, um, and I don't know if anybody else has had the problem, but it, you put, of course, the entry in the FS tab um, so that it automatically mounts it on reboot. But um, the hard drives seem to be okay, the manual hard drives. But the thumb drives, they um, I've had two go pop on me. And it's a right old pain to recover your Raspberry Pi because it then won't boot, of course. Um, so, yeah, gen generally it's okay. But it's um, I've had a few a few problems, with, mostly with thumb drives. But actually, um, um, normal hard drives, uh, three of them, I think, are uh, mount automatically and they seem to be fine. You haven't had any sort of OS problems? Like no, the Raspbian works fine, don't end up with issues? No, with... I format them all as EXT4. Um, and yeah, they're generally fine. I'm just, 
the thing is some of the thumb drives I think are just not designed for this, this sort of thing at all. So you're kind of doing a bit of a hack, I imagine. But I had, um, um, where's this one here? I had a sand disc, um, this one over here, it's tiny. Can you, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. A sand disc ultra or is it a, a cheap one? Uh, it's about 15 quid. So okay. I don't know if that's cheap or not, but it's, um, but yeah. this was 100, 128 gigs. So the whole the thing was, is I wanted to sit that, have uh, that was in the back of the the magic mirror, which meant that I could because of, because I was going to a Raspberry Pi four with four gigs. I thought, well, I don't have to compress my photos anymore. I'll just stick them there and be, put have a big fat thumb drive on it. And I didn't want to have a a, a manual drive spinning it all the time. Um, but um, it decided to crash about two weeks ago. So I've, I'm coming up with a plan B now, different approach. Oh, question. Sorry, my question is in regarding your uh, your storage device. Did I mishear you? Or did, are you raiding the uh, the storage, or you're not? No, no, I'm not. No, it's, I've got I've I've got quite a few copies of it, but I'm not actually. I think if you, I still think if you uh, wanting to have reliable storage, you'd just get a Synology with a mirrored drive. <laughs> you know, the, what I'm doing is keep taking you know, this time machine version of a backup and then um, other backups that are, that if I get hacked or, you know, if they get blown away, it's not the end of the world. But, I, you know, the one thing I do want to have is multiple copies and this whole sense of having the time machine backup, but it's, um, I'm not doing rating or anything. And the, the, the golden copy of my data was always on the commercially available NAS drive. Gotcha.